What's up, Salt Strong Nation? Joe Simons, like Diamonds, back again talking about iCast. We're talking about what $700 pliers. We're talking about some goofy looking lures, some really nice looking reels, some cool rods, a lot of neat stuff. Got Justin here, got Luke. I think Wyatt is uh, off this week fishing with his family up in uh, the panhandle somewhere. So uh, the three of us spent a few days there at iCast in Orlando, had a blast. Uh, it was it was good just getting back in general and seeing some old friends, actually like remembering what shaking hands felt like and that kind of stuff. A little disappointed that it, I mean, it. I don't know if it was half the size, but it was certainly smaller than before but i was also excited that there were some cool new products and uh and that's what we're going to talk about today so where do we even begin i know we have this kind of list that we'll put in the show notes of the best of category for pretty much everything from rods and reels to line to soft plastics to you know boating accessories i mean there's a lot of of category how many categories do they do they award winners to do you know justin no i I mean it looks like 20 30 categories there's a lot of i mean anything yeah. you can think of yeah um so where do you want to start i mean pro- you want to just go with reels because that's probably what most of us want to know about hey what are the new changes what are the update and i saw you over there at Daiwa, just like hovering he's like literally levitating justin's so excited to be able to feel these new reels yeah it's 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 pretty cool they uh we called it i i i knew that when the bgmq came out and that being such a such a positive impact on you know for for all types of fish, but really for the saltwater guys, that MQ is innovative. And we talked about that back in March and April, saying that the MQ design, the bigger gear, the waterproof, the one piece body. I mean, that threaded side plate eliminates having three screws hold the side plate in place. We have to evenly distribute the pressure. It's entry point at at each three screws to have a threaded side plate that. Honestly, you can't even get into like it, it's so tight on there. You need a fabricated tool to get into. It's so watertight and airtight. I knew that they were going to start incorporating that into other reels coming down the line. And then they just debuted at ICAST and knocked it out of the park. They had they have the ballistic MQ coming out, which we got a video out about that. And they've got the saltist MQ. A um, little bit different, a little different focus, bigger sizes. But that saltist MQ actually won best saltwater reel at ICAST. That's it was, it was pretty sweet. Um, and it's I fished a, with it's the, a pretty sweet reel. It is like I, I fished with the previous saltist and this, like, just like where you have the BG and the BGMQ, the BGMQ is like just a couple notches higher and has uh, some extra bells and whistles than the regular BG. The saltist MQ is very much that, um, you have the mag seal feature, you have the improved bearings, you have an improved rotor, but you've got a little bit more compact body style in the saltist MQ. They've got a Zion rotor, which is sick because when you start looking at how a spinning reel works and refining, I mean, there's only so much that can be done to a spinning reel in today's day and age. You start figuring out how you can make for a better experience for the angler, reduce weight, reduce, I guess, slop or that rotor is a lot of weight. So when you use that Zion material that Daiwa has and incorporated it into their rotor, when you turn the handle, you're not feeling any resistance. Like it's, it's very fluid because it's so lightweight and dense. Um, you don't know that it's there. I mean, all you're feeling at that point is just the fluidity of the actual gears turning inside the reel. You don't feel that counterweight of the rotor. Um, and a lot of companies are, are starting to do that. refine you know, their, the overall sh- like size of the reel and the materials that are used to reduce weight. The fact that they incorporated Zion rotor into that on a solid metal body keeps it in that weight range that the BGMQ is at at that like eight and a half to nine ounces size for the insure guys. Um, But it just, it feels way smoother. Like it's just a premium material in that rotor. That's pretty cool. What what does the MQ stand for? For those that have not watched your prior videos on that. So MQ stands for monocoque or it's a singular one piece frame uh, I'll grab my uh, my my BGMQ in a second. The MQ is essentially let me get this puppy out. So guys, I, I love toys. I got you got to have all the toys. Okay, so you guys see that threaded circular piece here on the side of the rail? As Mark Mills called it, Mark is the uh, field marketing manager for Daiwa. That ring, it looks pretty, right? Ooh, cool, shiny, but it's not a beauty ring. 
Like it's purposeful. This, you see the size of that side plate, that's the same size of the main gear inside of this reel. It's massive. It's like 20% thicker than any of their other, uh, you know, main gears, like in the regular BG. And their, their main gears are already bigger than any other competitor's main gear for the size of the reel. And guys, size on a main gear translates to increased torque and power when under load. I mean, it's, it's that simple. A thicker gear with more teeth and deeper cut teeth, uh, and even how the teeth are shaped and designed allows for when you're hooked up and you're actually turning down on a fish, you don't feel like you're cranking up a hundred pound brick, you know, like it, you have less resistance. Therefore you can get your fish in faster and not fatigue as faster works for throwing big lures works for bringing in big fish. The MQ design makes a lot of sense. Um, so MQ, when you see MQ in a Daiwa reel, it means monocoque and it's the singular one piece solid metal body. And you'll the really the thing that gives it away is that that kind of rounded side plate frame and that side plate is, is a threaded on watertight, airtight frame that, you, I mean, you can't take off. You need a special tool from Daiwa to be able to pop that off. Um, and nothing can get into it. It eliminates the concept of having three screws, you know, hold on and attach like a clam pack of a side plate together on a reel. You eliminate that concept entirely. Um, so Daiwa's had it on their higher end stuff like the Certate and the Exist and their Luvius for a little while now. The fact that they started, they brought it into that BGMQ last year and it took off. I mean, a lot of, a lot of guys, myself included, were like, there's a lot of, you guys have fished with the BGMQ, I think, right? Oh, Mark yeah. Hollywood's got a couple, you're getting big sharks and tarpon and it's like half the effort. Like it, it's, it's so much more powerful in terms of the power transmission out of that reel. Um, so to bring it into the Saltist MQ and then the Ballistic MQ, which is probably like, the, the thing we were most hyped about at ICAST, at least me, um, is awesome. Like I, I it would it made so much sense for them to incorporate that in their different reels and to see it like in person and feel it. I I know like that's next level. Like, when, do, when did they come out? Like when will we have them on our fishstrong.com store? So we uh, we should see them probably in early September. Uh, we've had them on order. We, we've known they were coming, but um, now we have a better timeline as we get closer to the date. I think they're going to get them like end of August. So between shipping and getting everything out, best case scenario, end of August, but likely first week of September, likely. I'm going to pick up one. Me too. Early birthday present. Yeah. <laughs> Which one are you going to get? So you're going to get. Um... Uh, I'm going to, so I'm going to get the, uh, I like the Saltist MQ a lot. Like I'm going to get a, if I mean, sky's the limit. I want like a 4,000 Saltist MQ, 6,000 Saltist MQ, and a 2,500 Ballistic uh, MQ. And normally I like 3,000 size is like my sweet size for inshore fishing. I like having a little extra line capacity because sometimes I do take small stuff and go for like 40 inch bulls in the fall months. And that's kind of perfect timing, but I'm going to downsize a little bit. I'm going to go with the 2,500 and just go super finesse and lightweight. And um, that's going to be for me. Cool. So Daiwa won a few other things, right? I got an email from Traditions Media, whoever it is. That what, so they won a, a handful of things, three or four I, things? Yeah, I think they won Best Freshwater Baitcaster, if I'm correct. It was with their uh, their Zillion. Yeah, that's a, yeah. um, their Zillion, which, is our, which has been in the lineup for a long time. The Zillion family of reels has been around for a while. Um, they just keep throwing awesome perks at it. Uh, likely is the, the TW feature. I believe I got to check that. But TW being their T-wing um, if I have the bait caster in front of me, I could show it, but take like a triangle, put it upside down. And when you press, uh, your cast control, your, your button for the bait caster, this T wing, which is like your, your level one on a bait caster, it drops down. And the concept is that there's more area for the line to come in and out of, of the actual spool of the bait caster. So there's less resistance of the line heading out because there's more space. So you get increased casting distance. Um, the T-wing design is pretty cool. That's that style was unique property. I'll have to find a picture, put it up later. Um, but I mean, guys, they like they knocked it out of the park. We went around and saw a lot of manufacturers, a lot of a lot of the well-known vendors, and it isn't just that Daiwa got best saltwater reel. They got best uh, freshwater bay caster, uh, and then recently we saw in Traditions Media that um, I think there were five top anglers that, that are in Angler of the Year Award with Bassmaster, and they're all Daiwa 
you know, supported or Daiwa sponsored anglers. So like in terms of their presence and the pros and choosing what they want to fish, like even the top guys are all using Daiwa products. They've really owned that bait cast market for a long time. Um, and now they've really done a lot of big pushes in the saltwater world, both offshore and inshore for us. And to like, you know, get best, get best in show for, for all those categories. And to see that stuff in person, it was like, you just drop the mic and walk away. Like it was really cool. Yeah, it was, I think the other company that did well was pure fishing. Of course, that's a massive brand and they've acquired a bunch of companies. So pure fishing is everything from Penn. I don't know the pen did pen actually win anything or was it more just Berkeley and Abu Garcia? I know had like best combo. Uh, uh, Berkeley got some like best in shows. And I think uh, their saltwater category, that's like some chop a lure in the, for, for best saltwater hard bait. Um, but Abu Garcia got best freshwater rod. It's cool. The sizing for us is not more, you know, applicable to saltwater inshore guys. You're looking for like a seven, six medium being kind of the standard, but for a freshwater rod, weight and feel i mean it, it felt nice like i think that that's a good drop shot rod for freshwater guys uh, i think it's a good light tackle rod if you want to go for trout um which is different i mean abu garcia has a has a long-standing name as well but they never really made stuff uh that, that had some crossover options so i tip my hat to him i thought it was a cool rod um what about that lure that one berkeley lure it's potentially one of the ugliest lures i've ever seen i'll Chapo. be honest the no, not Chapo. the Chapo. I'm not a fan of Chapo at all. Uh, no offense, pure fishing. But what's the other one? It was like the guppy or something with a, it was for bass fishermen. Oh man, it looked so, horrible. Um, I, I, I saw well, a picture. I was like, no way that thing won. The, the, like, who okay, designed so it? Someone looked at it and said it looked like a bluegill got run over by a truck. <laughs> like it's, pretty... it's got tire marks on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm sure it offers a lot of contrast when you look at it. Oh, um, yes, yes, but. Good. I, I don't know. I, we got to address the elephant in the room before we go on and we'll, we'll talk about pure fishing, but oh, it's called the power bait Gilly. Is that the power bait Gilly? gilly. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a Gilly suit? You know what a Gilly suit is? Gilly, like you you look like, you look like a swamp monster. You're covered with all. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But it's like the Gilly suit, but for a that's, blue <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, guys, who wants to talk about the, the, uh, Seven eight hundred dollar Danco plier. <laughs> My gosh, so unbelievable! Guys, and by the by the way, we love Danco. Yeah, we support yeah. them. Our our members get discounts from Danco. We I have many of them. Wait, I, we personally I use them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was a publicity stunt. I'm not really sure. But like, they came out with these. I don't. I don't know. Some super titanium seven hundred dollar fishing pliers. Now, unless it's some harness that's like literally or a magnet that comes right back to your, can you imagine like dropping those in the water? Cause I've lost a lot of pliers over the years. I, I mean, I want to, I'm not, I would never spend $700 on pliers. I'd rather go buy an $800 die will exist, which I've done and it felt great. And I'm still proud of my purchase, yeah. but I can't imagine spend it. Like what do these pliers do? What, what, do well, we know that's the, the story? thing is like they're not they're not bad they're beautiful pliers like they're striking they're they're lightweight they're durable they have the features that make it a, a wow plier i can't say anything bad about it we just saw the, the sticker price and we're like man like is it gonna take out the trash and do laundry like but there, there's got to be a story behind it i think they said it's an ai generated plier um so like the layout and the design is unique I just, I just see it and that sticker price is just really high. Like I have the tournament series premium. I have premium pliers. Like Denko makes awesome stuff. I've been using their stuff. Oh my gosh. 10 years now. Premium. Yeah. So you got premiums, Luke. Like they're great. Oh, they're solid. Uh, I think, I think time will tell like the, when we get our hands on it and we, and we get a chance to maybe use it for a day. Gosh, that's, that'd be a, that'd be a privilege, but uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's a, it was a high, high price point. A lot of people were talking about it, guys. So we're just sharing with you that what was talk of the town, the $700 Danco pliers. Like if Danco wanted to be acknowledged that, that right there. Like, that's right. That's why I kind of think it was a publicity stunt. I don't know. They even, they might even make them. They might make like 10, like who, how many people are really going to buy Likely those? a limited, it's likely like a, yeah. they're probably like at serial numbers and a limited supply. So, so you get it and you're part of that. Like I have the limited print of this run, you know, Hobie's done that with kayaks in the past. They had, man, I can't remember the name of it, but they made an orange kayak and it was a limited series, had C-Deck on it. And I think like 
500 were made and they were like almost a thousand dollars or something more than the previous Outback, but it's yep. the same as a kayak, you know? So those limited things are cool. Um, and I mean, I guess I'm one to talk. I've spent a lot of money on novelty jigs instead of buying a jig for 10 or 12 bucks. You guys heard the other day, I'll spend 35, $40 on a jig that does the same thing, but it's an appreciation for the art of it, you know? And I think that that's, that's part of the point is, you know, when you get it, when you, when you love fishing and you've been doing it for so long and you're kind of a, like a product junkie, like me, like admittedly the guys on this call, you want to have nice things, even if you don't use it all the time, because you can appreciate it because you know what goes into it because there's some art aspect behind it. Um, and I'm, I'm very much that way. So I think that's a big chunk of who that, uh, who that appeals to. I don't know. Not pliers though. I happen to have a hammer right here next to me. You know, it's the same reason I'll spend 30 on the hammer versus the $200 yeah. hammer. I'm sure they make I, so it like, kind of crazy. That HDX hammer could be like five ninety nine, but if it was a boat hammer, it would be twelve ninety nine, right? Oh yeah. Let's see. Yeah. This is didn't have so, a price tag on it, but um, yeah. yeah anyhow, that, I thought that was it was crazy, um, and it does look really cool. We'll, we'll make sure to put a picture in the show notes of uh, that bad boy. But yeah, I was yeah. I was blown away when I when I heard that it was that much money. Uh, let's all also talk about our good old I want to call them friends. But I don't think I saw Shimano on uh, on the list of winning anything this year, or, or were they? I I don't think I don't think so. That's what uh, happens, Shimano, when you don't care about your customers and you treat everyone like. Mm. Uh, sorry, I digress. Uh, but we talked about bef before in the past what happened with Shimano, and it seems to be kind of a trend amongst really the industry. Is you know they they were the best. I mean, when we started Salt Strong. That's all we use. And I still have some old CI4 and I don't know what happened with either was ego getting in the way or just, Hey, we don't care. We're the best. And they're kind of getting knocked off their horse. I mean, Dio is like beating them handily now and coming out with better stuff. And then the Shimano, like they take away the CI4 and try to like change stuff up and call it the Vanford. And you got to wear a collared shirt to buy one to get in their booth. I don't, I don't know. Just something changed there and shifted. And I don't know. So I was kind of smirking a little bit to see that they, uh, they, they weren't, no one was really talking about them. Uh, I don't even really remember seeing their booth. Uh, I know they had one. It had to be somewhat sizable, but uh, man, Dia was just spanking Shimano. Yeah. And Banking. like a, a big chunk of that, I think started happening with COVID. Everybody's had their challenges with getting supply out, but Daiwa was was a hero for a little while and they had inventory to be able to provide people. They ended up getting market share and placement with products that would go neck and neck with anybody else that had already like a slammer by Penn or, you know, a Saragossa by Shimano in terms of the big game category stuff, the stuff everybody knows. And some companies had a hard time getting stuff out and Daiwa had an opportunity to really show what they've had all along and people started looking at them. But what we found you know, we, we mentioned Shimano because like, honestly, with Shimano guys, they have their Nasky FC. It's a hundred dollar reel. They've, they've, I think they have. That's, that's actually a good reel. It's a good value reel. Kind of like, yeah. It is. It looks good. It's a good value reel. It's smooth. It's lightweight. It's got good inches per turn. But if you look at what it's going up against in that hundred dollar category and you put it up next to a Fuego, again, like yeah. in terms of ceiling, nothing's really going to be superior to a mag seal and like physical seals. I still stress a physical sealed system. It needs to be your first uh, means of defense, right? Is water getting somewhere there needs to be, you know, rubber gaskets or physical perimeter sealing throughout the reel first. And then having a chemical seal like mag seal or Shimano's use, which is I think core protect it's a hydrophobic coating that they, that they spray on or they add to, you know, a, a plate or a bushing, above the anti reverse in certain places that just like wicks away water that's effective to a degree, but to have an airtight and watertight seal with mag seal for the same price on a hundred dollars in that hundred dollar category, like anglers will do, they'll shop and they'll look and say like, what am I getting for that same price? And they're going to look at a fuego like us and say, well, I think you're really getting a, a superior sealed product in that regard. Um, but in terms of like performance, artificial lures, it's great. And they, uh, the cosmetics look cool. It's like a solid, metanium metallic color it looks really slick aside from that i think they they had their older um well not older but the end of 2019 early 2020 they redid their spheros sw it's like 130 retail for like a 2500 to 3000 size 
And now they've beefed them up to their, their bigger offshore sizes, 8,000, 10,000 plus um, to be in that sub $200 category to compete, like to have a different price point than the Saragossa. So I think that's really what they did. Those are the things that I saw at the corner of my eyes. Um, I tip my hat to them, but at the same time, like it didn't really support our initiative. Like we're educating everybody here on what we're seeing and knowing and like talking to the guys at Daiwa, like they, we understand it. It's like, we end up kind of leapfrogging each other in conversation because they're salt of the earth guys They're It's all about having good communication, having a good relationship and educating people about tech and reels and what really helps you and your game on the water. Um, so that's, I think that's why we appreciate like the stuff that Daiwa's done, you know, the relationship that we've built with them. Yep. And if you look at, you mentioned like the top six bass guys, right. Who won all the awards. They're all Daiwa guys. And if you listen to what they say, cause I watched a couple of their videos where they do little reviews and they're like, and some of them have left Shimano in particular to go to Daiwa. It wasn't because of the money. They all paid the same kind of sponsorship deals. It's about them listening. That's it. I mean, everyone says, man, we finally have engineers and upper management that listens, where Shimano is known for that kind of like the big high skyscrapers where, hey, you can't come in. Our engineers know what's best and we put it out there and you better buy it. Whereas Daiwa has done the opposite. They're actually like listening. I mean, it's crazy. We get on Zoom calls with them. Like that they offered, hey, we want you guys on here to see this stuff and give us your feedback before we launch it. Where Shimano, you can't even get a phone call with them. That was back when we we had a contract with them. We were, you know, supporting them. But uh man, good for you guys, Daiwa. Way to way to spank them. And like I said, we uh we we're not big, big fans of Shimano. I still love my old Shimano reels. I mean, that's that original CI4 was great. It still blows my mind that they took that away and tried to replace it with a Vanford and FL and like, why not stick to the stuff that works? And uh, I don't know. So I know that's going to come up, but uh, in, in terms of, hey, what's what's Shimano? But I don't think they want a single thing. Um, could be wrong, but I don't remember seeing their name on the list. So I want to I want to kind of jump back to uh, Penn and Pure Fishing real quick and talk yeah. about that. So guys, the the Slammer 4 was debuted at, at iCast. I've had the Slammer 3 in 4,500 size. Uh, I liked it. It was a good reel. They've, so I guess some of the biggest changes they made on the Slammer 4 is, I don't know if it's the, the Roman The Roman numeral, numerals, it's 4 now instead of a 3. Yeah, yeah, like IV, you know, it's, anyways, yeah, it's not, whatever. But like the rotor is a little bit lighter on the slammer. So again, like we talked about with the Saltus MQ, reducing the weight on that rotor reduces slop or, you know, a counterbalance as you're spinning the handle. Uh, they have them in smaller sizes. So now the slammer four is going to come in at 2,500 size. Uh, they have a double ball bearing supported spool, which was interesting to learn for me. Um, for those of you out there, when you look at bearings on a reel, for many years, before anybody ever stopped to really look at what that meant, people would think more bearings equals smoother. Like it was a, like, ooh, nice. And in some, in some way that's true. But, uh, but like Baycasters made overseas by, by brands you've never heard of before will pack 18 ball bearings in a reel and like seven could be in the handle, just stacked one on top of each other. So it's not about how many bearings, it's about the quality of the bearing itself whether it's shielded or sealed and the key locations of where they place that bearing either to allow for fluidity, like in the, in the spool, which is what we're talking about, or like, you know, around the pinion for support to allow for better rigidity around the pinion. So bearings are interesting and I'm, I'm learning more about that key placements and material, but to have a double ball bearing supported spool, you know, I have a bearing that rests on the main shaft and then a bearing that will be up underneath the plate where the drag stack is the best way to view it is when you're under a load and that spool is spinning on that main shaft, it's essentially spinning on the bearing. So it's on rails, you know, it's on a more fluid track. So there, so, you know, you wouldn't, you might not notice it if you're red fishing, but if you're going after a tarpon or you're going after, you know, sharks or something massive, and you hook up, you're not going to get this chatter or this like choppiness out of the spool. It's going to be very, very smooth. Um, so having key bearings in the spool on the main shaft, I think is awesome. I think that's what they added to the, to the Slammer 4. Um, and then for their high speed, they, I think they even have a high speed model in a 2,500 size, which is cool. 
previously on the slammer they had him i think the high speed on the higher sizes like a 5500 6500 they have him on the 2500 now like a 2500 uh 4000 uh i can't remember what other sizes and all it is is the handle so the the reel's still going to be black and gold but the handle is going to have a little bit different cosmetic where it's going to say hs on the side of that that aluminum round knob for high speed i like that i think you have to know as an angler going in, if you want the high speed, you need to look for that handle instead of like a completely different cosmetic, which is what they did before. Now you got to look for that different handle. Um, and those are like the biggest things. But one thing that I saw was they have a DX model. So guys, if, you, if you've seen before, they had their Pen Battle 3 and then the Battle 3 DX. And the difference was like a bearing and then the gear material where the battle had aluminum gear and you know machined aluminum gear, machined aluminum pinion. And then the Battle DX was brass. Well, now the Slammer is brass. And then the Slammer DX is all stainless gears, which is the highest quality material that I know of in a, in a real in that $300 price point. Like to make those gears, they were saying that they go through, you know, machinery and tools are just dulling out and they can only make so many because they're wearing down their tools to make that actual gear. Um, it's a high quality material. In terms of feel, you might not feel much of a difference between you know, the Slammer 4 and the DX, they're going to feel about the same, but the actual material itself is a superior material. It's going to last longer. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Very cool. Um, Got to give a shout out to our friends right down the street, technically, next city over here in Polk County, Florida, Bull Bay, best saltwater rod. How cool is that? It was the, it was the Banshee though, right? That's not technically yeah, my it's not my favorite one uh but i also have i also don't own one um yeah they feel nice i've seen them in stores they look cool they have a, a cool color to them it's kind of like a like a camo type color um yeah it looks awesome. i mean i felt them in the stores they feel nice they're faster action than the stealth sniper that uh that we've used in the past and and a little bit faster tip than the the custom bull bay that we that we use but uh, really similar components, all just nice components. It's a solid setup. Just have you used that one yet, Banshee? I haven't used it. I've, I kind of have my eye on, they have a seven foot 10 for like the diehard redfish tournament guys that need that, that just extra distance. Um, they have a seven, 10, six to 12 medium. That's awesome. Like I, I tip my hat to the guys. We know Dustin and Kelly, they're, it's a father son operation, family owned business. They've been making custom rods for a long time and they got into the, production rod game so to see that arc happen from like 2010 2011 to 10 years later getting best you know best rod best saltwater rod was impressive um and well deserved like they're really good guys they're easy to work with and talk to i've known them for a long time when i was doing a lot of, a lot more tournaments um and that's really their focus is like you know a good price point and a very tech specific approach so they're making rods for for inshore anglers or making the brute force for offshore guys. They just, they make a good look, good looking product, but a good performing product at a fair price point. Yep. I wonder, I wonder how they, I, I don't know how the whole thing works with submitting certain products, but um, I wonder how like that one, one versus sniper stealth sniper or anything else. I wonder, I mean, the seven Tim one, I'm just now thinking how far you could cast the power bait Gilly uh, uh, country mile, <laughs> cast that old turd uh, right there to the, the next. Off. Huh? Think of the Chapo as well. Think how far that thing is. Uh, we're not even going to talk about the Chapo. We're going to give the Chapo <laughs> no nothing. Um, out of the, out of the thing, you saw the thing. It's got like a motor on the back or something. Uh, the Chapo. The I'm, I'm more excited about. I'll actually buy a Gilly just because it's so big and ugly. Uh, the thing looks hilarious. I bet you the I bet you the bass would inhale that. Uh, I bet a, I bet a snuckle suck that thing down too. It's yeah. uh, the Gilly, the Power Bay Gilly. Have you seen it? Yeah. U G L Y ugly. It's ugly. Uh, yeah, and uh, on the on the rod side too, I'd say shout out to TFO. They did update um, one of my one of my all time favorite rods that helped me catch the balcony snook. So I will forever love that rod. But the TFO Professional, yes. in particular, they did a uh, a makeover of it. So same blank, same feel and action. A little bit slightly lighter material, so the feel is going to be a little bit better. But the handle is way better like it is it's um it's just more comfortable it's like kind of ergonomic and they took all the threads out of it so right now the the top you know the foregrip is cork and that actually twists up and down to to lock the 
the reel into place. So when you're using it, it's 100% cork and it's comfortable as well. It's just comfortable. It's just nice cork. So big step up from what they had before. And yeah. uh, so I've, I'm super impressed with that. So like their butt section and their foregrip is contoured. It like, it's kind of like an, like not like an hourglass, but like it cuts in and then the butt section tapers out a little bit and it looks sleek, but it, it feels better in the hand. I will, I will admit that. Um, I like the new like metallic layout of that professional series. It looks really good. And I think they have like, Okay. Well, they have like uh, like color coding for their, their, their power sizes. Right. So medium, I believe is yellow. And then I think medium light might be gray or silver. And then their medium heavy is like a red. Right. So they kept that, that tab, that like color tab for an accent to differentiate power, but like the whole metallic of the rod, it just looks, looks really good. Yeah. And what, another reason I like it is it has like for kayak anglers in particular, I do a lot of uh, you know, paddle fishing from a kayak or paddle board, and it has a shorter butt. So from the, the real seat to the butt of the rod, it's like 10 and a quarter inches, if I remember right. And compare that to like the bull bay, I've used a lot of the bull bay rods. Um, those are usually like maybe 12 or 11 and a half, 12. So it's like an inch and a half shorter butt, which that, which means, you know, the total rod is seven and a half feet. You have a longer casting, um, casting side. And so on casting contests with uh, seven, six rods, that TFO one, even though it was only a hundred dollars, or I guess it's 109, um, that will compete in many times outperform the, you know, the, the higher end rod, the much more expensive rods from other companies. So I've been, uh, I've been super impressed with that rod. And, and again, with that new makeover, I'm, I'm even more impressed with it. And they're just, they're just great people. You know, a, a trend that we like to talk about and we like to emulate as well here at Salt Strong is the open door policy from the top down. And and what I mean, like, you know, I, I've kind of ripped on Shimano earlier. They're the opposite of that. Like, you can't get a hold of anyone unless you like go through 15 layers to even get on a phone call. It, it's frustrating, right? Because you you want your voice to be heard. And especially if you have great input and comments and suggestions and so i go by the tfo booth tfo is a big company right and they've been around for a while and i mean massive and fly fishing and and frank paul who's the president of all tfo is i'm mean, just out there on the floor very rarely do you see the president or ceo just like out there in the middle of the booth just wanting to talk to random people to get feedback and i ended up chatting with him for a good 30 minutes and uh, just such a nice guy. And, and he truly wants to listen. He's like, all right. And he's showing like, tell me what you like about this. How can we improve this? I and mean, that's unheard of for bigger brands out there. He's not, they're not a startup. I mean, they have a lot of employees. It's a big company. And I think that's so cool. And Dia with the same thing. I mean, we had uh, Carrie Graves, you know, who, who honestly left Shimano after being there like 20 years because of a lot of the stuff going on. And now he's the top of, of Daiwa. Same deal. I mean, he, he, he did not have to be or need to be in the little meeting we had. He came in and wanted to shake our hands and just listen, like, hey, man, how can we serve you guys better? I thought that was awesome. And, and we wanted to do the same thing here at Salt Strong. And I, heck, I spend at least two hours of my day every day just replying to emails from, from our members. Uh, we love hearing from people. And so we want to have that same open door policy. And I think it's the only way that 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 a company can grow well and and and, and it can, can really not just attract people because that's the cool part, but keep customers, right? Keep them, keep them come back for more and wowing the heck out of them. And just like with TFO, I want to tell everyone about TFO because they're just so nice and that, and they listen and they do right by their, uh, you know, by all their customers. So I thought that was really, really, really cool. I mean, it just, it shocked me when I looked over there, I was like, cause I met him before in the past, like, man, I can't believe Frank Paul's just sitting there on the floor, just chatting away with people and trying to get feedback. It was really neat. Yeah, our, our, the first time we went, you know, this, we were start, we we're in the business in the saltwater business, you know, the saltwater industry for totals four months or something. Brand new. Somehow we we talked our ways into there. We got mm -hmm. tickets, and I, I just I just found TFO from a local uh, tackle, a southeastern tackle here in Tampa. Now I just started using rods. I just went over the booth and just want to say, hey, like I, I just went to the first person I saw, and I was man, just want to say you guys make some good stuff. And it happened to be Frank Paul, and he gave me like 15 minutes. And I didn't even realize who he was. I had no idea. I thought he was just like a you know salesperson, um, just super nice. And he gave me his card, and I was like too nervous to even look at it. I was just like still in like all that I'm in high cast. <laughs> and I was going through the business cards the way back, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was talking to the president of TFO, and like he was just so nice and genuine. And he remembered me the next year too. I was like, it was just really cool to see, just you know the 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 top 
the top movers of companies just be so just down there and, and nice. So um, again, one of many reasons why I really love that, love that company. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about some of these other ones on here. This shark bands fishing. I wish we had that. First shark deterrent tackle. <laughs> um, Justin, what's the deal with that? I'm not as savvy at understanding what's actually happening inside, but they have uh, shark bands has this product that won best terminal tackle. It's called the Zeppelin. It must give like an electromagnetic pulse or something, but it is to help prevent or deter sharks from being around you or around your catch. And I believe Joey Antonelli did a video of this like a month or so ago of fishing, you know, over on the East coast. I mean, anywhere, whether it's a goal for the Atlantic, he was over on the East coast and he was fishing for gag grouper and red snapper. And I mean, there's areas that are like just sharked out beyond belief. Like you will get maybe one out of every five that you hook and the others get sacrificed to sharks. And it's a really big problem more so now than it was, you know, five years ago as more and more anglers are fishing and more and more fish are coming up stressed and sharks are getting in on the game. They know what's going on. So shark bands is this tool. It's like this little pod almost right it's like four inches five inches i've got a little short video of it and i watched joey put it on his line drop it down hook a nice size keeper gag grouper and watch the sharks come up and deter away and there's multiple videos out there by them by shark bands showing that in action where guys are fishing on bottom with bait or they hook something and they're bringing it up and the sharks come up and they kind of zigzag and they hone in on it and then they they, they peel off because there's something about that, that they just do not like um, I, I don't understand all the science behind it, but it's enough for me to say, I think they sell for like 90 bucks, like 89, 99 was a retail and, you know, four people on a boat, gas being 60, 80 bucks a person, like that being gas for one person for one trip, but you take it out all the time and you're not going to get sharked. Like that's, that's, that pays for itself the first time you take it out. So I thought that was really cool. Shark Vance has been around for a little while now for a number of years. They've had actual bands, but to have this portable unit that you can put on a fishing setup and drop it down and that be the deterrent, that's that's pretty sleek. I, I think that's really awesome. So yeah. I did a little investigating and I found out looking at some of their uh, patent submissions and stuff, exactly what 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 causes the sharks to go away. Ooh, okay. What it what is it? Well, there's a little small speaker if you really look closely at it. And if you take a camera down underwater and listen, the little thing is playing Nickelback over and over again. Oh, gosh. Everyone hates Nickelback, including sharks. So they've That's played perfect. around. They had John Mayer. They had a few others. They tried and Nickelback was the one that the sharks just over and over again, pretty I, much from Australia all the way to America. I feel so just, bad that like sound travels so much better underwater now. Those poor guys just can't get away from it. Nickelback. Yeah. And, and Matchbox 21 was in there for a little bit. Some of the sharks really like that. But over, uh, in general, <laughs> Nickelback. <laughs> I knew I knew this was going off course as soon as he started just slowing down the talk and getting serious. I knew it. Yeah, yeah I was. Uh, so I'm actually on their site now. It's seventy five dollars for that that Zeppelin, which is pretty cool. And that's good. Um, and you get a free Nickelback DVD. Yeah. <laughs> we, so it's, it looks like it's from some magnetic thing. So it's not Sarge, Sarge is not sound. It's uh, it's magnetic mm. technology of some sort. But they want you to believe, Luke. And uh, yeah, we we were just in Carabelle and we were just getting just totally wrecked by sharks and uh and so that would have been that would have been really cool i, I wish we'd have had one to test it out because it would have been an amazing test like the sharks weren't powerful. they weren't destroying your catches they ate the prop off your trolling motor yeah. like the sharks are getting cocky okay <laughs> so that's in my opinion there's a lot of people you know that's a whole different sidebar conversation but the sharks are getting overly confident in their turf and they're getting too comfortable with people. This is just a, a good deterrent. We're not, you're not hurting the sharks, but you're getting them to swim away and mind their own business while you go out and have a good day and catch fish for dinner. You know, like I, I think it's smart. I think it's a cool, I think it's a cool tool. Yeah. All right. Next we got Bubba is in Bubba blade with the um, best hand plier slash tool. So they beat out that $700, uh, ai generated pliers so it's the cordless electric fillet knife what do you guys think because i had a couple of people ask me about it uh, i don't play enough fish to have a nice cordless electric fillet knife but apparently 
they got enough votes to win what do you guys think have you tried it seen it used it felt it I've used, that one. I, I've used a lot of their normal their non-cordless ones and love them I, yeah. i'm actually a big fan i got I recently got one that has the uh, one handle and it has three different blades you know uh, i guess a five seven and nine inch blade so you can just quickly go to the with the blade you want they're all super sharp i've it was actually a little bit too sharp. I, it was the first time I ever cut myself. First time I used it, I yeah. actually sliced up my finger. But uh, but I, I've been I've been a big fan of their of their products. Yeah, Bubba's made really good stuff for a number of years now. To the point where you know, like the name recognition, you don't call you know tissues face tissue. You call them Kleenex. People talk about knives, and they're like, "Don't worry, I got my Bubba. I got my <laughs> Bubba with me." So you know, like, oh man, we're gonna have the best flays. Like it's gonna be super clean. So they've been known for making a good quality knife for a number of years. It makes perfect sense for them to put it into a, you know, an electric, electric knife. So I haven't seen it in person. Um, orange handle and you know, it's a, you know, it's above a, yeah, I, I personally just like the manual knives just to be able to get more, more meat out, right. You can just kind of make it a little bit more precision cuts. Um, but for like offshore guys who just catch a bunch of snapper and where it's just, you know, I mean, you're just going to sit there all day if you try to get like every little, nitpick of, of that meat you can just uh, like joe with uh ouija bentley down the keys we go out there snapper fishing and when you have you know just a ton of of snapper in like the you know 17 to 12 inch range it literally is just like one swipe and you're done it is is light years faster mm -hmm. than uh than the manual method might not get quite all the meat but but as far as time savings it's big yep um i also saw that afco won four different things the afco you know that's who we used to do our apparel with so they have lifestyle lifestyle apparel for women best category for men technical apparel warm and cold weather um good job there friends at old shed family there at afco that's pretty awesome um so i gotta add to that speaking of afco coming out if you guys haven't already seen it yet uh wyatt was really excited about this i am too and, and luke we talked about it um, AFCO, I guess, partnered with the Ikejime Foundation. We have a bunch of these things. The Ikejime. Yeah. It's fun to say. Ah, yeah. We ended up, we ended up saying we got carried away with the names like the Mark Jacob. It, it, we were calling it different stuff. But Ikejime, for, for those that don't know, um, man, I'm going to butcher knowing what Ikejime means. Uh, but it, it's the process of humanely euthanizing your catch to prevent the chemical response of like of stress and 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 you know things that that an animal emits when it's under stress that can end up changing the flavor profile of a fish so guys that just catch a fish and put it on ice that animal's still technically alive even if you gill them even if you you know knock the brain out like that animal's still going to elicit or still going to emit stress you know stress hormones that are going to I, I wouldn't say contaminate the meat, but it's not going to make the meat as high a quality as it would be as if you had done Ikejime. And it's like, it's a three-step process. You have a brain spike, you have a means of, of gilling the fish so they can bleed it out. And then you cut right behind the tail and you insert basically this metal rod down the spinal cord to pretty much circuit break and wipe out that entire spinal cord. And you don't have all of those uh, all of those hormones and all of those bad things being put into the fish when they're under stress. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty arduous process, but in terms of like, uh, the guy gave an example, he said Spanish mackerel back on the dock in the Gulf could be like 79 cents a pound. Okay. But Ikeji made Spanish mackerel done by the right chef will pay $26 a pound. I mean, that's substantial. That's way more the quality of meat when done with this method, you could, we saw pictures of Spanish mackerel fillets and they were like snow white. They were pure white. Didn't have, you know, the, the meat was just more tender. Like it makes sense. And I'm looking forward to doing this on some tuna when I go fishing for blackfin tuna to have like, you know, tuna that's it's not blackfin anymore. Like now that is yellow fin sashimi grade tuna. Um, so if you're going to go through all the effort of catching something that you plan on keeping, they have a bunch of different sizes. We got sample packs of all these different sizes and Wyatt made a really good video about it, talking about the step-by-step -step method, which size best goes for which species you plan on harvesting and, um, and just kind of the whole story behind how it got introduced. So the fact that AFCO really kind of made this the first USA available product, they're really trying to make this more for the, our domestic market is really cool. This is a common practice overseas 
But now to have it to where we're teaching people like, all right, you're going to go catch a grouper. Here's the method you can do it to make that grouper last longer in the fridge. You don't need to vacuum seal it. And it's going to taste way, way better. Is It's a pretty cool story. And it's to be clear, it's it's less about animal rights. Um, and because I thought it was at first, it's more about having delicious tasting fish. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, you're killing the thing anyways. And uh, it's because yeah. it's not really even faster. Or is it? I mean, because it is a few steps. Technically, the spike to the brain, it's it's killing it faster. That's the best. Yeah, that that action right there is putting the fish out where that fish is dead. That fish is not feeling anything. There's just receptors to where the animal might have physical responses to being moved and manipulated, but the animal's not acknowledging that that's happened. The animal's dead. So, like the process, I think puts the animal out of commission and helps preserve the quality of the meat. So it is both like. A humane means of doing it and just better for you for you for from the table fare side of things so it's a good one two punch uh, yeah, it's i want to i want to try it on a jack Carval and just see if i can get like a five-star meal out of uh out of jack on a on a bonito that's the yeah. next thing i think bonitos are underrated and this is this is going to be the test i think yeah. another thing to, that would be neat to try in a little side-by-side -side test is to play nickelback uh to fish in a cooler <laughs> and then have some with no music <laughs> while drinking some white claws too. oh yeah ooh, yeah and if you guys missed uh definitely go check out our instagram page we had wyatt got to go meet captain mark hollywood johnson for the first time and mark johnson don't play around and he certainly does not like skinny jeans he certainly does not like <laughs> zimas or anything that might be considered um a non-manly drink and our boy wyatt not not a big beer drinker uh, clearly uh, he, he could pick out anything he wanted and he got white claws and Mark says, I ain't having this on the boat. He's like, who brought this? And he's like, pound it now. It's like seven 45 in the morning. So it's having a pound of white claw. Oh, it was so funny. White claw, Wyatt. That's what happens when you don't make the, the podcast. Um, so that, those are some of the main ones. There were a couple other ones. Uh, you know, Plano uh, was on there a couple times for, you know, they're different because I mean, they make definitely the best boxes. I mean, that, that new edge, uh, I know they have a different, a few different options of the edge. I mean, man, it's, it's expensive, but it's fantastic. Like th those are definitely the best tackle trays I've ever, uh, I've ever used. Uh, what's the Atlas tackle pack? It, the Plano mold, uh, molding one, that one for just overall tackle management, uh, the Atlas tackle pack. That one. Yeah, I don't know. I saw that on there too. I was like, I didn't know about that one, but uh, yeah, they had they had their name on there quite a few times. I've we'll not to, seen it. We'll have to figure it out what this Atlas Tackle Pack is. Could just be a bunch of their different edge boxes. I don't know. Um, yeah, my uh, the one that stood out for me over there, Plano. Obviously, I love the edge, but I already knew about that one. But the the dry me uh, tackle the trail that we're going to wash me, yeah, the the wash me, yeah, I, I like that one. So. They're, they're called the, the Hydroflow series. They've had the Hydroflow for a little while, but when we got to take a closer look at it, it made a lot of sense. Like their Hydroflow is a regular stowaway tackle. It's like their base stowaway tackle tray, but they have, you know, molded holes in the top and the bottom of the tray to where you can spray it off. It can air dry and your stuff's not going to get rusted out. And like different companies, they have a restrict, a restrictor, where like the entire tray itself, the whole plastic emits a, what is it? Is it like a gas loop or something that prevents rust from, from happening? Um, yeah. When they, they have that, but like this, this hydro flow with all the, the holes in it, that's like, you can't beat that. You spray that down after, like I've had so many top waters and maridines and things where the hooks have just rusted out after a couple of uses. And I was lazy and I threw it in my tray and I'm hot and tired when I get home and I don't, I spray down my rods. I'm not going to spray down my tackle because the water will get stuck in there. So the fact that you can spray it off and let it sit out, you know, out in the garage or in the sun and let it dry, you're going to prevent rust from ever happening. Like that, that makes so much sense. And Luke, you talked about that being like, you go fish for the day, you use a couple hard baits or whatnot, and you put it in that tray, you spray it down, and then you put it back in your regular organization tackle box. So like we call it the wash me box. A little smiley face, like dirty. You'll put a little smiley face on it. It was cool. I, yeah, I just it, like it it I've been, yeah, I've been using top water every morning. So every morning, you know, get out early, top water. But then as soon as the sun comes up, I'm, I, I'm not top water is not nearly as effective. So I cut it off. 
I don't want it to put it in my normal tray because I only use waterproof trays. I've had too many issues where water gets in the trays and wrecks everything. And so lately I just put it on the console of the boat. And then if I'm then if I'm doing some lure changes, right? Then I don't I just don't want to have a bunch of lures sitting up there on the console and I'll forget them up there. And uh, and so now I'm gonna get one of those those uh, wash me trays and just have it there where it's empty and then just whatever lures I use go into that after coming in, just spray it down with the rods and reels, let it dry, and then put them back in my tray, in my normal trays once they're dry. Like that's gonna save save me personally a lot of time and hassle and and uh in both you know having clutter in the boat as well as having those hooks, ru hooks rust out if i forget to, uh, to wash them off you can put the same sticker on your hair a uh, little reminder maybe every once in a while to actually <laughs> wash your hair yeah at least at least once a month right yeah. <laughs> you know what why did send me um let me find the picture of this have you guys seen this before it is bush soap bush as in soap. like yeah <laughs> i like it and he says it actually smells good he's gonna pick up a bar sandalwood yeah so it's got sandalwood a refresh mountain sized soap with refreshing sandalwood scent i know it's good so you know I, it's good it makes you grow chest hairs using oh it. for sure yeah you might be able to grow a beard justin put a little lather on your uh anything at this point well, <laughs> i'm about to get it <laughs> All right, we'll pick up a couple bars. Uh, Wyatt needs some as well. Uh, get all that girly white claw scent coming off of his skin. Jeez. Wyatt. Um, yeah, the other cool parts were, I mean, getting to hang out with Bill Dance and, and a huge thanks to Captain Peter Deeks. You know, he's one of our salt strong fishing coaches. Peter Deeks, not only is he a salt strong fishing coach, which is, I mean, I mean, there's not really anything past that. It's kind of like the pinnacle, but a guy named Bill Dance is kind of a big deal. Hired Peter is kind of like his go-to saltwater fishing guy. And so Bill Dance, if you guys can believe it, still filming shows every year. And he's got his freshwater shows and his Bill Dance saltwater, which continues to keep winning awards. And about half of the episodes, Captain Peter Deeks is his guide on there. And so Deeks had... Bill dance over there and Bill's just so nice. Like he stops what he's doing just to talk to all of us and, and uh, everyone got to get their picture with him. And uh, you know, and he even like made a point to come back to me and he's like, man, just Joe, let me know anything I could ever do to you guys. I mean, who does that? Like what a nice guy. And I mean, he genuinely means it too. Uh, just so cool. That was cool seeing him. A lot of other, I mean, guy Harvey's walking around and uh, it's, you know, it's always cool to see some of the, uh, people we always looked up to it uh you know at these events just kind of walk around and say hi to them yell yell their name out um what yeah, about you guys anything else or anybody else cool that you saw um i mean i i feel like every 10 steps i took i saw somebody that i knew like icast is the busiest week of the year but it's the most fun week and every year you do it it's three two and a half three days of of seeing new products is essentially the biggest thing is, is seeing a lot of like-minded people in the industry and seeing new products by these different manufacturers. And it's never enough time. Like there's so many people. And even though ICAST was smaller, um, I mean, we weren't able to get through like half the show and we were go, go, go from like minute one, the door open on Wednesday and all through Friday, right there when they were tearing down the booths at the end, you know, why we're still getting video footage and stuff. And there's still so much we didn't see. Like we, we came by and said, hi, you know, some, some of the guys at Mudhole, they set up a booth too. Um, I, I went and saw Sunline, which does more fluorocarbon and braided line. They made some really cool stuff. There were a lot of there were a lot of things that we didn't get a chance to go see that we wish we had more time to do, but we wanted to just kind of go through like the highlights, right? Like what are the things that most people are waiting in anticipation to see? What is Shimano doing? What is Penn doing? What is Daiwa doing for rods and reels? And um, and, and go see you know some of our awesome partners like with TFO and Bull Bay, um, but like that's again it's like the tip of the iceberg. I mean if if we had an hour to free to just go and poke around and see a lot of other new stuff. It would like, it, you know, it'd be that much better. It needs to be a week long show, but everybody tires out after two and a half days. Yeah. I could, I could talk for days. I, I love this show. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> cool. Anything else guys, Luke, anybody, uh, or other cool things that you saw? Uh, no. Yeah. It's just always fun to go there. All right. Just like, as Justin said, they're just, 
all sorts of products, like all that you can think of and a lot that you never would even considered. And I uh, just never know what you're going to see. And just like, you know, you see like stars every time you look around. Like It's just, yeah, I saw like, like Jimmy Houston was there, Bill Dance, just like anybody you can think of in the industry on like TV shows, magazines. It's just really cool to just to be part of it. So and KVD, so I said, I waved to KVD. You don't know who I am, but you know, still cool. The best bass fisherman of all time. No, Bill Dance is the best bass fisherman of all time. That's all right. I said one of, one of. Ah, ah. Yeah, KVD. I get nervous. Uh, I couldn't talk. To, I was like, you're like, go say hi, man. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get scared. Well, it was cool. It, it, Bill ended up, he, he was talking to Luke and I, one of our insider members, he, he came up and, uh, you know, a guy like that, he's got so many stories and, and he was just showing me his phone. And it's just loaded with fish picks. Like he showed me this 14 pounder he caught and like, but then all of a sudden he stops uh, while he's scrolling through some of these pictures and these just kind of memories. And it was uh, a picture of him speaking at university of Tennessee is uh like you know the the guest speaker for the uh graduation and like even though he has glasses on his eyes lit up and like i'm talking like he spent five six minutes just talking like it, he's like it was one of the coolest things i've ever done in my entire life and it's so neat you know uh that you might think it was catching this fish or doing this and he's just like man i got to to basically you know it is he's about to turn 80 years old i believe this year and he's like i got to speak to this you know next basically the future, right, uh, of all these thousand plus graduates that are graduating at Tennessee and, and kind of uh, bestow some great wisdom uh, on them. And he's like, it was just one of the coolest things to, to be there. And, 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 and the actual stadium, which is a massive stadium there at Tennessee, and on, he's on the Jumbotron and echoing throughout the place. It's really, really neat. So that was cool. It was uh, just an overall fun event. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping uh, that I, you know, obviously you, you don't know what to believe these days with all the COVID getting bad again, but I, I hope next year, like it's kind of back to normal and uh, that, you know, it's twice the size. Uh, I hope it'll, because the irony is we have more people fishing than ever before here in America. I think I saw somewhere like we're, we're getting closer and closer to that 60 million. That was a big goal is to hit 60 million anglers. We're at 45 just two years ago and now it's like at 55 or 56 million anglers so we've had it on like 10 million which is crazy because sports like golf are shrinking just so you guys know i mean golf's still big but golf is shrinking in size of people who are active golfers a lot of because the younger generation is not golfing like you know our dads and granddads did and country clubs aren't as big as they you know were 30 40 years ago but fishing is exploding which is awesome so i i have a feeling that once this whole covid thing i don't know if it ever go away but when it gets a little bit more normalized that i'm hoping next year will be even bigger and we'll get to maybe do some of these podcasts live from the actual event i know we got a lot of footage um are we, are we just going to be kind of sporadically putting it out there i've already seen a couple of videos you guys did yep cool yep, over the next uh, next couple of weeks some some good stuff some product highlights, some techniques on the Ikejime. I mean, lots of cool stuff. Excellent. Cool. Well, guys, I'm going to dim the lights here and lay back in the chair and listen to some Nickelback. I hope you guys enjoy that one. If you have any questions, let us know and definitely go over to saltstrong.com if you're not already there watching this or listening to this. In fishing tips section, you'll see all the show notes and we'll even list all the best of each category in there and put links to everything we talked about here today, excluding Nickelback. We were going to give them nothing, uh, nothing at all. Um, so guys, hope you appreciate it. And obviously, if you want discounts on all the best tackle, everything that you possibly need to become an amazing inshore angler, come join us there in the Insider Club, which you can also join at saltstrong.com. Got guys like Justin, guys like Luke, Captain Peter Deeks, Captain Hollywood, now over 25,000 other members who love saving time, love saving money, and love meeting friends, which is where we do all that in the community. Been really, really cool. So, and 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 by the way, we are going to be sending out a survey for you insider members here pretty soon. So be on the lookout for an upcoming party uh, for insiders all over the country. Uh, a big insider only party, either at the end of the year or the beginning of the year to kick it off. So we want to get your feedback on some dates that work for uh, for everyone. So be on the lookout for that. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace. Good job, guys. Yeah.